Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to see how you can install the operating system into Raspberry Pi 5 computer and start using it with VNC server without having any external monitor. Now you must have seen or read or heard somewhere that Raspberry Pi 5 doesn't support VNC by default due to its new bookworm operating system version but the same has now been rectified and in this video we'll see everything from booting up the Raspberry Pi 5 to creating the VNC server and accessing it from your computer itself or laptop itself without having an external monitor. So let's get started. Now to start with, what you need is a simple memory card reader with a memory card. Here I am having a memory card reader as well as a memory card. I have actually two because I have created or flashed one just for you to show. And this one I will show you the process. The next thing that you are going to need is the official Raspberry Pi power supply. You must have also heard or read that Raspberry Pi 5 needs a 5 ampere power supply or 5 ampere adapter and you cannot use your conventional mobile phone adapter even though it says 24 watt or 50 watt or something but it increases the wattage by increasing the voltage and we don't want to increase the voltage so we need 5 volt 5 ampere that's what you must have heard or read but it is important or it is required to provide that level of current through your USBs. If you're just going to use Raspberry Pi 5 uh, for simple experimentation, then the official 3 ampere Raspberry Pi power supply is also good enough. So let's get started and see how we can install the operating system and start using it with VNC server. Now to do so, first of all, what you need to do is you need to open your browser and go to raspberrypi.com. Here, all you need to do is go to the software section and then install the Raspberry Pi Imager in your computer. This is the official Raspberry Pi utility which is used to burn the operating system onto Raspberry Pi, sorry, onto the memory card. <laughs> now you can do the online installation as well, which is a preferred way, but I choose to manually download an image and then burn it using the Raspberry Pi Imager. Because many a times what happens is when you are directly downloading and burning using the Imager, you may lose or you may have some error due to the wrong or poor internet connectivity which is many times the case in my situation so i'll go to see all download options here and then i'll go to raspberry pi os 64 bit and then i'm choosing this version over here raspberry pi os with desktop and recommended software i'm using or choosing the 64 bit version you need to use or you need to understand that when do you use 64 bit and when do you use 32 bit uh, the reason is very simple it's just like the windows pcs that we were using so if you want to access more than 4 gb ram that your system may have then go for 64 bit version if you don't have a 64, sorry, more than 4 GB RAM Raspberry Pi, then you can go with 32-bit version as well. It doesn't matter. So you can experiment and see how and what works best for you. So, well, but one thing is sure, none of them, all of them are official versions. So none of them is going to give you any trouble. Everything will work fine on each one of them. So simply go to this option over here and download this image. So it will start downloading. It's around 2.7 GBs. So I'll not wait for that long. I'll cancel this download and I'll show you that I have already downloaded this one for you. I'll go to downloads and you can see it over here. Raspberry Pi OS Bookworm AMD 64, sorry, ARM 64 full image. Now the next thing you need to do is have this memory card inserted into your card reader and then connect it to your system. Once the memory card is connected to your system, it usually shows up like this. <clears throat> now open the Raspberry Pi Imager on your computer. First step is to choose the Raspberry Pi device. I'm having Raspberry Pi 5, so I'll choose Raspberry Pi 5 here. Then choose the operating system. You can choose the Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit right from here and start installation. As I said, this will do it over internet, may take more time, may be facing some issues of something. So instead of that, what I'll do is I'll use custom. And here I'm going to use the same operating system, official Raspberry Pi operating system, which I have downloaded from internet. So I'll just choose this option over here or this image over here and click open. Now remember, 
we want to use this image without monitor. We want to use this Raspberry Pi computer without monitor. So some settings are important in the next step. Uh, first of all, choose your storage. It will show you the memory card that you have connected and then click on next. Now, because you want, you don't have a monitor, it's assumed that you don't have monitor, then you definitely want to put your Wi-Fi settings while installing the operating system as well as enable the SSH shell using which you can log into it remotely. So simply go to edit settings over here, set host name. So set some host name over here. Even if you don't do it, it's completely fine. But setting a host name is good to find it or to spot it when you try to search the IP addresses. I'll show it to you that in later stage. I'll just put some host name pi.local. Then I am setting the username and password as well. So my username is pi. For the sake of simplicity, I prefer to use password as pi as well. Configure wireless LAN. By default, Raspberry Pi Imager will take your default wireless network ID and password which you have used. So no need to make any changes here. The locality is also set. Go to services. Enable SSH. Make sure this is checkmarked and use password authentication. The same password will be used for SSH connection. And then there are some options which we don't have too much worry about. So just click on save and then click yes. All existing data will be removed and everything and let me click yes over here. Now this will start writing the Raspberry Pi image onto the memory card. Now it may take a while for the image to be completely written onto it. So we'll have to wait over here for some time. As you can see, the writing is almost completed and it starts verification. You can cancel the verification because it's just checking if everything is written correctly or not. So I'll just cancel verify over here. And now the memory card is ready. So you can now remove the SD card from the reader and insert it into Raspberry Pi. So I'll just close all these windows over here and then I'll turn over to my card reader. So here is my card reader connected to the computer. I'll remove it swiftly. And then I'll remove the memory card from this card reader and insert it into Raspberry Pi and boot it up. So this is removed. Now I'll put it into Raspberry Pi. Done. And then all you need to do what remains is simply powering it up using the official Raspberry Pi power supply. I have 3 ampere power supply as stated before. <laughs> now, once you connect the power supply to Raspberry Pi, the red LED should turn green like this. Okay. If it turns green, then you have nothing else to do. You can just simply keep it lying around and you can see I have not connected any monitor to this. So this is just lying around over here and I'll head over to my screen. So let's see here. Now after this is done, uh, we are sure that the Raspberry Pi will boot up and then it will connect to the Wi-Fi network. But how do you find out which is the IP address for it? So for that, you need a Wi-Fi scanner. You can use any Wi-Fi scanner. You can have a Wi-Fi scanner in your mobile and then use that. Or you can use one in computer just like I'm doing. So I'm using this something, uh, this utility called as Angry IP Scanner. Now with this Angry IP Scanner, I can scan my Wi-Fi network easily. So I have it installed in my system. Probably an older version, but that will do for me. Now open up the angry IP scanner. The IP range of your router will definitely be 192.168.1.0 and onwards. If not, it will be 192.168.0.0 onwards. If you are unsure about it, simply check your Wi-Fi settings. Check your own uh, address, the address of your computer and then you'll get to know. And the easiest way to do that is open command prompt and type ipconfig. 
ipconfig will give you the ip address of your computer and the default gateway so my ip address is this 1.14 default gateway is 1.1 so my search query is okay so 192.168.1.0 to 192.168.1.255 and simply click start here remember you need to have let raspberry pi boot up completely before doing this so that it has acquired or it has connected to wi-fi and has acquired an address it takes usually at least two to three minutes and by the time i spoke so many things and did some uh, passing up of time i'm sure raspberry pi is connected as you can see raspberry pi has acquired this ip address pi.local 192.168.1.17 this is where setting the dns name in the settings was important if you don't do it then a name will not show but it will still show you a blue bubble and ip address but by putting a name you can easily spot it out over here now what you need to do next is you can now log into your raspberry pi using this ssh utility called putty i use putty you can use any other ssh client just simply go to putty.org and download it so let me download it for you i don't want an installer i don't want to download it rather i do have putty and it usually is in my system okay so i'll open putty and then or putty to be honestly uh, to, to be very precise on the pronunciation and then i'll simply put my host ip address 192.168.1.17 and connection type is ssh you don't need to do any other changes and simply click on open accept the cache key login as spy enter password as spy this will not be visible okay now as you can see we have logged into our raspberry pi over command prompt now we want a graphical interface and to do that what you need to do is you need to go to sudo raspi hyphen config here you need to go first to the advanced options where you go to this a6 wayland setting here you can switch between x that is the windows based bootloader or sorry not the bootloader but the remote login utility or wayland so by default as you can see it is w1 x11 and w2 wayfire just choose w1 x fire and click on tab which brings it to ok and hit enter now open box on x11 is active now again go to the uh, interface option that is option number three hit enter go to second option that is vnc hit enter would you like vnc server to be enabled yes of course we want vnc to be enabled so click on yes and hit enter now this will enable the vnc server onto the raspberry pi just wait for these messages to be over vnc server is now enabled click ok just come to finish by using arrow keys would you like to reboot now yes of course now once you start rebooting raspberry pi the putty terminal will lose its connectivity and honestly i don't need it anymore either so what i'll do is i'll simply go to angry ip scanner again to start my search so that i'll get to know if my raspberry pi has completed the booting process or not so it was 192.168.1.17 and it's showing question mark so it has not responded so let me stop it again and let's start again okay it has responded at spy.local but i'll still make sure by starting the scan again <laughs> and checking the response on 192.168.1.17 so not yet now it has actually gone into the reboot mode so let me rescan again 
This is a simple check that you can do to understand whether your Raspberry Pi has booted or not. It has indeed booted. This time you will see the bubble is blue. We have not identified the domain name. And it happens many a times that sometimes the DNS name is not visible. Now everything is done. All you need to do is now open the VNC viewer on your computer. Again, I don't want to miss this step by assuming you know it, but you need to download VNC viewer from real VNC website. You need to download the viewer, not the server. Server is there onto the Raspberry Pi. So go to Windows and then download the real VNC viewer. Here, simply put the IP address 192.168.1.17 and hit enter. You will see this one particular error message. Simply click on continue. The username needs to be pi and the password needs to be pi. That's what I have put. And then click OK. And here you have your Raspberry Pi 5's desktop right on your laptop screen without using monitor. So thank you for watching this video. I'll post more Raspberry Pi 5 videos related to the common hacks or the common issues that are faced during development and will upload them shortly. Thank you for watching.